This is RV Dream New Radio and New Radio Star, and we're very happy to have an old friend on with us today. I guess I can call you an old friend, right? Oh, I would hope so. This is Dr. Barbara Condren. She is head of School of Metaphysics at in Windyville, Missouri. Did I get all that right? You did. Well, pretty much. I'm not really the head of it, but I, I'm one of the people that makes sure that it comes to the world and it's available for people. Well, if you're and not guess the... Our headquarters is in Windyville, Missouri, which is near... And it's Springs, which some people may know because it's a fishing mecca. Um, and the Ozarks. Yeah, and the, the Ozark o- Mountains. Yes. And the beautiful Ozark Mountains. Uh, we were in Fayetteville, Arkansas, so we know about it. We know about that area very well. Well, if you're not the head of the school, who do I need to talk to? You should be the head of that school. <laughs> well, we, we have a governmental structure that has a board of directors and things like that. I'm on sure. the board of governors. Sure. And my, yeah, my title is Governor of International Education. You've written, you've written many books, and you have been a scientist in the whole idea of metaphysics and, in particular, dreams uh, for true. some time, for, for many years now. Yep, for going on almost 40 now. It's 39 years. And what we're what we're going to talk about is the National Dream Hotline, which comes every year. But before we get into the National Dream Hotline, give us just a little brief overview of the School of Metaphysics and who it is and what it does. Well, we're a not-for-profit 501c3 educational organization. We've been in existence for 40 years, and we have um, 15 branches of our school throughout the Midwest primarily, and also have a, a web presence. Um, at SLM.org and DreamSchool.org. And um, what we do is we teach people how to navigate and understand consciousness, how to understand everything from um, why you remember your, um, your um, where you put your keys, but you don't remember your anniversary, <laughs> um, you know, and how to imagine a different kind of life, how to work with your daydreams as well as your night dreams. Um, how to strengthen your willpower without uh, a lot of distress and trouble, how to breathe, how to breathe well, how to breathe deeply, how to energize your, your mind and your body, how to um, take control of your health, you know, uh, really be in dominion with that because that's very important nowadays. Um, everybody's becoming more health conscious. Um, being able to explore your dreams, explore consciousness in terms of going beyond just the limits of, of what's on our physical life and, and really developing the self as a presence, as a healing presence for other people, as a compassionate, loving being that can actually um, shed light wherever you go, those kinds of things, where it's a practice, it's a daily practice of, of meditation, concentration, visualization that actually develops self and connects the self ultimately with the inner self or the soul, um, as some people would call it. It's an eclectic study. It goes all over the world. Um, it derives the truth from um, literature and, and holy scriptures from many cultures, many time periods. Um, it invites an open-mindedness that tends to season the heart and help people to get along with each other better. Um, one of the things that we're most proud of here at our campus is the Peace Dome. Um, we built a building that's called the Peace Dome in its 11th year now. And uh, we have people come from literally all over the world to this little town just to visit us here at the Peace Dome. So that's pretty cool. Um, but that's our work. That's the heart and soul of our work. And um, it really is about enriching individuals so that their relationships with their family, their, ch- their children, their parents, the people that they deal with on a day to day basis can be enhanced, improved, and people can derive spiritual growth. And people can come there for a period of time as full-time students, and then they come from very, for various events at times. Is that the way it works? That's true, yes. Yeah. So we do have full-time students here. It's a, a work-study program that we have on the college campus. And we also have uh, retreats and things of that nature that people can come for just weekends and study. And then we have um, the course of study in cities ranging from Chicago, Cincinnati, down to Dallas, um, back up to Kansas City in, in that general area where people can uh, work and have their lives in the cities and then they attend classes once a week for three hours. So it, it's, there's a variety of different ways that you can receive the program. We also have a correspondence study and much of the dream work is actually up, uh, available through dreamschool.org in our Dream School Scholar Program. So there are a variety of ways that people can study with us and can learn and um, develop themselves in those areas. Now, the event that's coming up we want to talk about is the National Dream Hotline. Tell us about the National Dream Hotline. The 
Angel Dream Hotline began 26 years ago, and it's a wonderful um, venue itself. It's a wonderful venue for people to learn about their dreams, to talk to someone who is an expert, a dream coach, um, who can give them insight into what the dream is saying, what may be happening, and how that dream is relevant to their waking life. And the things that happen during Hotline, which uh, we open phones on Friday night, coming up this Friday, and they're open all the way until Sunday night at midnight. And we have such amazing conversations with people, um, not just uh, typical dreams like teeth falling out and um, going to school and you're not prepared for a test and being naked in public and things like that. Those are co- very common dreams. We, we answer those, of course, and talk about them. But we also oftentimes meet people um, that their lives are really changed by being able to open up and talk to somebody about dream experiences. Sometimes they're very frightening. Sometimes they have to do with um, their child's dreams, which sometimes are nightmares and they really don't know what to do. Night terrors, which uh, usually is a childhood phenomenon, although it can stretch into adult years. Um, And there's a lot of of relief that goes on when people learn some of the research and some of the experience that we have and the wisdom that we have to to share. And then there are the people that have visitation dreams. That, That always happens this time of year. We have people call who dreamed of their mom or their dad or our loved one who had, has died, has gone on, and visits them in a dream. And it's very life-affirming for them because most of the people by far who have those experiences already have an inner sense that they actually were in communion with that person. However, our culture does not really um, yet foster that kind of support and exploration in consciousness. And so quite often they don't talk about it, and sometimes if they do, they get discouraged by what they hear from the people that they're talking to. So to talk to someone who's actually invested hours, you know, um, years in this case, into this research globally, and to find out that there are people on around the planet in many different countries who have the same experience, and to talk with people who have actually made it their life to investigate consciousness and develop it and what the, their experiences are is incredibly relieving to people and highly um, supportive in terms of what we can really do as individuals in the dream state that we often just don't know about or we take for granted. So there, it, it, the hotline's a wonderful time for both the public at large to call us and talk to us, and it's a wonderful time for us to be able to receive and embrace them and to offer some of the value that we've um, accrued here in 26 years of study. So it's a great time. Uh, we enjoy it. We stay up all night. Um, it, it, goes call. From, it goes from what time to what time? What are the dates it, on it? It starts um, this Friday, which is the 26th, and it, runs, it starts at um, 6 o'clock Central Time. Central o'clock, 6. All the way through midnight. And people can call, you know, in the middle of the night you wake up, then if you have a dream, then you can let us know. And we'll interpret it right there on the spot for you. Kind of and and it doesn't cost anything. It does not. Well, you know, you've got your whatever your phone charges are, but that we don't have anything right. to do with that. Right. It, the, the interpretation itself doesn't cost anything. Right, but you don't charge anything for that. No. And no. if people want to know, if they want to know a little more about it, I'm sure you have some some uh, details, more details, and the phone number and so on on the website, right? We do, and they can call us at four one seven three four five eight four one one. Um, they can also email us at dreamschool.org. Um, dreams at, at, at where? Uh, give us that again, Barbara. Dreams at dreamschool.org. Okay, and, and let me have the phone number one more time. 417-345-8411. Okay, and beginning that time, one of the things I was thinking about today when thinking about this, too, is that people need to understand the confidentiality of this. This is the, I, I, I'm wondering if... Maybe sometimes people go, I don't know these people, and I don't know if I want to tell them about this personal mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, sometimes people have that, and I think, you know, unfortunately, we never hear from those people, and it's not right. that they don't want to talk or need to talk. And so, yeah, it is important that they know that, that the dreams are confidential, that um, they're not um, broadcasted and, and listed and things like that where people could trace them back and things like that. We may, um, you know, at times use or cite a dream that we receive in terms of it being anonymous and it being a male or a female or something like that, and it right. may uh, be put up in terms of interpretation that might help other people. But never is there a breach of, of uh, 
privacy in that regard unless we have talked to the person and been given their permission. So, uh, yeah, it's not broadcast on, and, on the web or anything like that. And, it, it's and not it, on the radio. And, it, and it's a good way to begin, too, as far as uh, you're helping interpret the dreams, but also in an ongoing basis then. Uh, one of the things people want to be able to do sometimes, especially if they're having repetitive negative dreams, is they want to be able to get control of that and stop that, right? And that's right. something you can help them do. You know, what's really ex- pretty exciting about that is that with um, re- reoccurring dreams, what happens is once the person understands what the message of the dream, what the dream is trying to get across, then the dreams will stop. Because that's why they reoccur in the first place. It's kind of like, um, I know that you're a parent, so am I. So there were many times that we, we told our children something, and we found that we needed to tell them five times, ten times, thirty times. <laughs> and, you know, and finally on the, on the 31st time, it was like, well, you should have told me, Mom, kind of thing. Like, right. you know, we'd never said it before, right? Right. And that's kind of what a reoccurring dream is. Um, it's the inner su- subconscious mind telling you, a message saying, hey, this is important to you. And either we don't remember it or we just discard it. And then here it comes again. And here it comes again. And then sometimes it turns into a, a kind of nightmarish form um, because nightmares tend to grab our emotions and so we remember them. And um, I look at nightmares now entirely differently than I did in the very beginning. Um, I look at them as one of the greatest friends that a person has to wake them up, literally. Um, not- because they're so strong. Yeah, and you're not going to miss it, and you're going to remember the details. Um, because many times, unless someone is, is concentrating in their daily life and interested in dreams enough to write them down, then they just get snippets of a dream. They don't really get the full message. I'm working on a book right now called Dream Alchemy that's going to be about your dream as a story. And it um, goes through the dream, and it talks about the basics of story, which are um, characters, plot, setting. Um, theme, things of this nature. And in the best dreams, all of those things are, are present. And just as we would write stories, and they would have a particular structure and meaning to them, our dreams take on the same kind of structure and a very similar meaning because it's about communication. The dreams are communication and our, our, our writing, our, our stories are about communication. In fact, some of the most enduring stories through history, um, what we consider holy scriptures, or something that is complete like Shakespeare's work, tend to continue to move through time and space. They're, they're timeless. What they have to say to us is so universal that it goes beyond the right. time when it was written. Right. And so your dreams have that same kind of quality for you. They always tell you about where you are at the time that you have a dream. And I know that um, many of the parents that I know take time to make a journal of the children's dream. And it's, we see it as one of the, the best gifts that we will ever give our children. Because especially when they're young, they, they don't have the skills to write their own dream down yet, nor do they have the inclination. So as parents, if we can do that for them, and then we know where they are as we, if, as we interpret the dream, and we can give them, we can gift them with those records when they're older in life and can really appreciate it. And it becomes like a spiritual autobiography of the person. It's, it's quite a, um, an amazing thing to journal your dreams and to see to understand them. Well, and those dreams come from ourselves, don't they? They come from they the do. subconscious mind, the superconscious mind sometimes. They do. And they tell us about our whole self. Um, you know, they'll, they'll solve problems for us. They will tell us about probable future events. They will tell us about um, our relationship with other people and um, how we can become calmer or more compassionate um, they will tell us when we need to make decisions. They'll tell us when habits are getting the better of us. They'll tell us even um, probabilities of when we might have health difficulties. Um, and that's all in decoding the imagery in the dream. That's what the Dreamer's Dictionary is about, which um, is something that I wrote back in the mid-'90s. Um, and it's something that we, we study on, on Dream School at the website, dreamschool.org. Um, there, there are many articles that have been written by many people um, about the subject that we're talking about. And you can find just about any basic question that people would have, you can find something that we've written that's online, which is pretty cool. The, uh, the, the one universal thing that we all have, and I'm, I, you and I can talk for hours, and I don't want to take too much of your time, and, and, nor do I want to take away from what's going to happen when they place this call, 
But the one universal thing we all have is none of us want to be afraid. And so dreams can help you uh, clarify what's going on, how things are. Like if you get a bad dream, or when I say a bad dream, when you get a dream that something negative is going to happen, or if in your life you're dealing with a lot of fear and so on, dreams can be your best friend in that regard. Absolutely. Absolutely. They can always give you guidance. They will always give you some kind of insight. Um, you know, the, the history of dreaming is, is remarkable in itself. Ever since man has begun to think, someone's been dreaming on the planet. Someone's dreaming all the time on this planet. That's how prolific it is, how widespread it is. And that's an amazing thought when you really reflect upon that. It tells us how important dreaming is to the human species. And, uh, you know, the Native Americans, many of the tribes, um, the Cherokee, um, the Sioux, the Iroquois, they would not do anything without consulting their dreams first. And the thing that has evolved in, over time, um, like the Greeks with the Temple of As Asclepius, um, people would go and, and it was a place of healing. And the first thing that they would do is, is have them lie on couches and sleep. And then they would have dreams and they would tell the temple priests what the dreams were. And the priests would help them. Uh, would diagnose them from what the dream said. And this has kind of been on cultures around the planet where there's been that kind of, there's always been like a shaman or a leader or a dream interpreter or an oracle or something, uh, a minister. Um, Joseph in the Bible was certainly that for the Pharaoh in, in Egypt. Um, all of those, those people throughout time have had a sight about dreams and a kind of inkling into what the messages were. And many times in, in some of the cultures, like the tribes, they wouldn't even do anything without consulting their dreams first. In other words, they were spirit-led. And that comes from turning within first, instead of always looking outside for your answers. And there's such a, a, warm, a warmness in, the, in the, the makeup of the self, in the fabric of the self, the fabric of the soul, um, the spirit of the individual when they turn inside for that kind of guidance. There's nothing that replaces that. And so as you do, the fear dissipates. Even with things, messages that might seem very fearful, like death, killing, things like that, are often kind of disturbing for people. Although sometimes not, I'm finding, um, with, with people that we correspond with. Primarily, primarily because of media. Um, the movies are now. There's a certain desensitization that's happening with people with um, violence. That's, um, it's its own thing. It's another topic, probably. That, right. Um, People right. don't always see, see the same things as nightmares anymore. It's kind of interesting. But so those kinds of things are symbolic. Death in a dream, for instance, will signify a change that's happened. Well, um, dreams certainly... So I'm sorry. If we're scared, then we kind of steer away from that. Dreams are certainly part of our lives, and probably the least talked about part of our lives, too, as, uh, since they're so prevalent all the time for most people. Yeah, and very personal, too. Very personal. And, that, a lot, and you touched on that earlier. Um, you know, that's why people often don't want to divulge them. They also don't want to divulge them because they, they fear that they're real, meaning that they, they look at them as if they physically, consciously, when they're awake, have thought of these things, like um, fidelity dreams, infidelity dreams, or killing dreams. They don't want to tell people about it because then what will those people think about me? Right. The thought. And it's because they're not really separating the inner self and the outer self. They don't, they don't see those worlds as different and yet related. And that's what dream interpretation can begin to aid someone to see, that there is a difference between the sleeping world and the waking world, and there's a reason that that difference exists. Right, right. Yeah, sleep in itself is a very strange thing, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought about that the other day. I thought, a little death. how weird it is that I take part of, part of my life and just go be unconscious for a while. Yeah. Uh, what a strange thing it is. Well, it's all very... It's, it's, it is wonderfully strange, I think. I uh, the, the world is very exciting and fascinating to me, and, and, uh, and it's great to have people like yourself who have studied this uh, and the people uh, around you who are, who are concentrating on this idea and being willing to share it. So I do hope that the people listening to us right now will take advantage of this particular time uh, to be able to make those calls and, and have discussions uh, I would like to just have a day with you if you wouldn't mind, you know. 
I think yeah, it would be great. That so. would be great. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that is, that is why we do it. We do it to be a service. It's, it's, you know, it's a wonderful sure. public service that we do. It's one of our favorite times of the year. And we, made, we just make so many friends doing it. It's a wonderful class. Okay, would you please give me the phone number one more time? It's 417-345-8411. And, and they can also visit us at dreamschool.org. Dreamschool.org. Dr. Conrad, it's always nice to uh, to talk to you. Uh, we've been doing this for several years, this conversation, and it gets gets better and better all the time. It Maybe does. I'm, it's always wonderful to touch bases with you, Bob, and, and to hear about your adventures and what you're doing, and it's exciting what you're doing as well. You're doing a living dream, and that's really cool. A living dream, yes. Well, that's yeah. living the dream is on my hat, in fact. Uh, that's so, wonderful, so, yeah. So, uh Maybe I can start to uh, gray out those uh, that line between awaking and sleeping and just have it awake all the time, huh? Lucid dreaming, we call it, yes. <laughs> Lucid dreaming. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Dr. Barbara Condren, thank you very much. We appreciate it and look forward to uh, uh, getting to talk to some of the people this weekend and uh, encourage everybody out there to do the same thing. Thanks for taking your time to talk to us on RV Dream New Radio and New Radio Star. <laughs> 